Hi friends, uh, welcome to a very interesting conversation today. It will be interesting and inspiring. We have got a very renowned advocate from the High Court, Shri Harshad Badbade. Uh, Mr. Badbade is renowned for his knowledge on RERA, which is the talk of the country as on date in India, especially where it is already implemented in Maharashtra and a couple of other states which have already been activated on RERA. What we are going to do tonight is discuss the critical points of RERA on how it can be understood by a developer as well as a buyer in the real estate sector. Friends, RERA will do to India what SEBI did to the stock market. So today we will discuss this with a very knowledgeable friend of ours, Advocate Harshad Badbade. So Mr. Badbade, uh, welcome to the inspiring conversations where we are going to conduct the topic called RERA. RERA is Real Estate Regulatory Authority which has been implemented in India and we are proud to say that it was first implemented in the state of Maharashtra. Uh, Advocate Badbade, what would you like to say on the registration process for RERA for a developer? So I think basically we should start with the basics. Real Estate Regulation Act mandates that where the property size or land size is more than 500 square meters or where there are 8 apartments then you need to register that project. Now the act has divided it into projects into basically two aspects. One is ongoing project, another is new project. So basically those projects in Maharashtra who have not received occupation certificate on or before initially it was 31st May, sorry, 1st of May 2017. Now in view of latest uh, FAQs which answer that it is up to 31st July 2017. So those projects which have not received occupation certificate as on 31st July 2017. It can be a building might have not received the occupation certificate for the last 20 years. Even those need to come no, under RERA? No, that will not come into RERA for the simple reason. See RERA basically as you rightly said it is a regulation, regulatory act regarding development and sales of a building. So there are buildings in Mumbai especially as we all know where they are ready but occupation certificate is not received for various reasons. Litigation is pending, some changes in plans are there for various reasons. So I think those buildings where there is no sale and are already occupied by the purchasers long back may not require registration under RERA as of now. What happens if a resale happens in such a building? The resale is still governed by the other acts. RERA won't come into picture because see RERA is regarding the sale of a new building or which is an ongoing building. Old buildings the sale will be governed with respective laws and RERA won't come into picture. So Mr. Badbade what happens on the 31st of July 2017 in Maharashtra especially uh, the time given by the authority for all the developers to register their ongoing projects and also to developers who want to start new projects, they also need to get registered. What happens to the ongoing project on 1st of August 2017? No, those projects which are registered as is mandated by the Act and the rules framed there under, they will have to, they will get the certificate, they will get registration number. Now today only there is a new circular which has come up from the authority which says that every 3 months or 90 days precisely, you have to maintain your website which will where you will update the development of your project. So today if you have registered with let us say 3 floors and which is ongoing project and within 3 months you have completed 4th floor, 5th floor as the case may be. So within next 3 months, 90 days, you will have to update that now I have reached further stage of that project and that every 90 days you will have to keep it updated till the occupation certificate is received by the project. What is the application of RERA on a plotting scheme or on a villa development? or on a multi-story building. How does it apply to these three so types of development? Basically, RERA applies to all where you are doing a plotting of a land or where you are selling independent villas by constructing independent villas in a layout or of course as you said a, a high rise building. To all this, RERA will apply. You must register your project if you intend to sell market offer for sale. Then you must register your project under RERA. Then only as a matter of fact, uh, RERA Act says that no sale, offer for sale, marketing shall be done in respect of a project unless it is registered after RERA having came in effect from 
first of May 2017. So, I think RERA provides 90 days breathing time for ongoing projects, but otherwise if it is a new project unless and until you have registered you cannot market offer for sale, sell any of your apartments, plots or bungalows as the case may be unless you are registered. And if it is ongoing project again as I said till 90 days which is now coming to an end. So, before that you will have to register otherwise you cannot simple it is as simple as that you cannot market sell or, or collect money from collect money, anything, buyers if you are not registered anything, under if you are not registered under RERA. What happens to projects which are happening in places like Lonavla, Karjat or in Alibagh where people are selling half acre plots and they are developing small houses on those plots not changing the nature of the land they still remain agricultural plots what happens no, in such cases see understand agricultural land will not come under RERA okay point number one even if there is a development point number two yeah I am coming to that uh, point number two uh, what I understand what is happening in Lonaula or uh, the holiday destinations basically is there is a plotting done systematic plotting done the entire layout is developed and then those plots are being sold to the end users who either themselves construct the bungalow or they get the bungalows constructed from the contractors. But in those cases where there is a plotting obviously they will have to register that plotting and the layout of that. So, construction would not come under RERA, but the plotting would come under RERA. Correct, because here in a as uh, we are discussing there is no sale of a constructed bungalow, the sale is of the plot. So, what happens is there is a larger pic, the, there is a larger land, you get it subdivided into plots. You Where we divide the property card yeah, like the 7 by 12 develop, extract. Correct, you develop the internal roads. And, and the plot right buyer side. will give contract to a contractor that is a to construct, that is their personal see, transaction. Because then the plot buyer is constructing house for himself. Right. So, it is for his own use, he is not constructing a bungalow or a building to sell. And if the project is of an agricultural nature where there are half acre or one acre plots, where the nature of the land is not being changed to non-agricultural, in such cases the person who has bought the agricultural half acre plot, obviously he has to be an agriculturalist to buy an agricultural plot. For that person, if a contractor is coming and contracting and developing a villa on that agricultural land, then RERA is not uh, being attracted. Obviously not because as I said again that, that if I have bought a particular land and I am constructing a bungalow, it is always for myself. I am not absolutely provided there is no such thing that you are going to construct 10 bungalows again on those plots which you have purchased and sale. Then of course, you will require registration, but if you have purchased a land, you have given a contract to somebody, you are constructing your own house for uh, whatever vacation purposes, residential purposes, then it won't require registration. What happens to joint ventures under ERA? What happens to the uh, the role of the landlord, where a landlord is offering a land to a developer to develop and the landlord is getting paid either through sales revenues or as a part of a constructed area of that particular project. So, what happens in such case? What is the nature of the risk and liability that the landlord carries? and what is the exposure that he gets under joint ventures? See Rajesh, as uh, the RERA defines promoter, now that definition says either one who constructs or who causes to construct. So, basically uh, in short landlord will fall within that mischief of who causes to construct. Now, as far as Maharashtra is concerned, there is a circular issued by the authority which clearly mentions that where there is a revenue share or there is area share by landlords, then they have to register themselves as co-promoter. And not only that they have to register themselves as co-promoter, but they will have to stand with the promoter regarding development of the project. So, uh, first of all, the landlord will have to have a bank account in case of area share the amount which will come as RERA mandates, whatever amount comes 70 percent will have to be deposited in that RERA separate account. RERA account. And once that amount is deposited in that account, it will be withdrawn as per the certificates which are issued on the basis of percentage of completion of the project. This is point number one. Point number two as far as liability of the landlord is concerned, see the circular cl clarifies that the liability of landlord towards the project will be as that is mentioned in the development agreement or you call it joint venture agreement or any such agreement which you have entered into with the promoter which clarifies that it will be 
basically the of course duty of the promoter to construct the project to bring it to certain level sometimes you may have shared that the landlord will get necessary permissions required permissions for construction or main main job of the landlord would be to convey the final land to the project after completion of the project to the buyers to the buyers to the buyers or the association of society whatever it is so i think the landlords responsibilities will depend upon the agreement which he has entered into with the promoter and as i said he will stand with the promoter he we, he is also one of the promoters as per so he holds equal advantages and disadvantages he also can be tried under rera if there is a non compliance from the developer towards no, the buyers no, will I'll he be no, tried I'll, for that i'll i'll tell you see uh, as i said there is a circular issued by the regulatory authority of maharashtra which states that the liability of the landlord will be as per the agreement so if the agreement doesn't specify that or rather if the agreement says it is the duty of the promoter to construct the building the developer then developer then you can't shift that uh, duty on the landlord just because he is a co promoter he can best be said that he will be following the reg regulations and the rules of rera but i don't think that the liability of constructing the building can be fastened upon the landlord in any circumstances because it is not a job even as per the agreement in case of a litigated property where the developer is not able to complete the project on time he will be tried by the law under the rera provisions what happens to the landlord in such cases does the property get stuck and what happens to the arrangement between the landlord and the developer in case of an incomplete project which has already been sold to some buyers no i think see the there are number of questions in your two questions basically so under rera you have to declare a date on which you will complete the project that is not completed that is not completed then you have an option of approaching the authority giving reasons why the project is delayed there is possibility we have seen now in uh, recently uh, in uh, Uh, Gorbandar Road. There is a stay, blanket stay granted by Honorable High Court, saying that no occupation certificate should be given to the buildings. Then so that the building is ready. Yes. So that is upon the authority whether to exempt it, not to exempt it. In a worst case scenario, it. what happens to the buyers? In a worst case scenario, therefore, what happens if the ultimately let us take the worst scenario where the promoter has failed to deliver the project even, even after, after extended period. extended period, then he ceases to be the promoter. Then the authority comes into picture. then there are various steps the authority can take such as the authority may call upon the society bearers of the allottees whether they can complete the project whether they can complete the project or some or new pro developer they want, will they want him to appoint some other developer who can complete the project so will the new developer who's been appointed or the society being appointed to complete the project will they also honor the pending commitments financial commitments towards the landlord what happens to the landlord in such a case see ultimately landlord's interest will have to be protected because you can't say that at the end of the day landlord will get nothing and uh, the project will be completed so of course the authority looking at the facts of the case will decide and take into consideration not only the interest of uh, landlord rajesh i would add interest of uh, the banks who have financed the project they may have first charge on the project Okay. so the authority will take into consideration overall interest of the financiers landlord and the allottees ultimately the authority is there to take care of interest of allottees but while taking care of that interest it will have to take into consideration the landlord's interest the interest of the uh, lenders the financiers banks. everything everything so rera is basically a very good discipline to ensure that every buyer is totally protected and the objective of the government is to make india as one of the safest destinations for real estate investments in india for especially for non resident indians also who are very wary about investing in the real estate of india since it was taking many years for the completion of a project with rera coming into picture those fears are put at rest and the government will ensure that every developer is brought to task and justice is made in terms of quality and the delivery time of the project promised to the buyer when he is taking the first payment from the buyer uh, mr badbade i would also like to ask you on a situational basis like rera is implemented and suppose we are on the 1st of august today a developer has registered the project the developer is also the landlord for the project but he is now sold 50 to 60% of the project and cannot have the financial capability to complete the rest of the project now the company is registered the project is registered 
the buyers are also known in the list of uh, buyers and now he cannot complete the project. So he goes out to a new developer, signs in a joint venture. What happens to the registration of the project? Does the new entrant to the project also needs to be added as a co-developer in the RERA certification and what is the process? No, I will tell you. What happens is, see, first of all, uh, I must tell you that in such a circumstances where there is a major change going to happen in the constitution of the company, you will first require 70 percent consent of the allottees. So it is not now, which used to happen earlier, that a man walks out with a file in his hand, says, this is my project, take it over and smoothly done. You will have to take consent of the allottees who have agreed 70 to Seventy percent of the allottees yes, who have yes. been sold the Correct. So units. you have to first take the consent of those allottees. If that consent is there, obviously it will be placed before the authority and of course he can come in. It is there is no So that also doesn't gets stop you from growing or from uh, introducing a new player in the uh, that particular project. It only says that take the consent, take the approval and go ahead. And that information also gets uploaded, uploaded. and fact, amended. Yeah, I would like to add here what you were saying just now, that the beauty of RERA is, see uh, earlier in Maharashtra, we had Maharashtra Ownership of Flats Act, which is MOFA, which also required uh, disclosures to certain extent. But at the end of the day, the developers were never showing those documents to the purchaser. So the layout, the, the building plan, the apartment plan, everything was kept as if some secret. So now because of uh, RERA and especially because of MAHARERA, I would call it Maharashtra real estate uh, rules, what beautiful thing which they have done is it is everything is online. So one step you just have to visit to maharera.mahaonline.gov.in and you can see details starting from who is the promoter of the project, who is the architect, who is the, architect, who's who's the, the structural engineer, engineer who is the, the chartered accountant. So all, not only the details of the professionals, but how many car parkings are there, how many apartments are there for sale, how many apartments are booked, everything, what amenities you are providing. And what is the progress of the project uh, that work wise that, that the as on that date? Right, that as I said earlier, that the promoter will have to maintain every 90 days, he will have to update that uh, this is now the uh, the stage of my project and this is how I am going to complete the project and the date of completion of project is already disclosed by him on the website. So he can't run away from that saying that no, 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 this is some other date. So basically he will have to comply with uh, those commitments which are given by him. As far as the commitments of dates are concerned, now there are large projects, people develop lakhs of square feet of uh, uh, development area or large acreage of development zone. Now when they phase out the project when they put a phase 1, phase 2, phase 3, phase 4, can each phase be registered separately with a separate date of completion? That is question number 1. And question number 2 is, what happens to the common amenities like a clubhouse and a swimming pool or a jogging track or a football pitch? If the project is promising all of these amenities, does it have to get completed by the completion of the first phase or can the developer have the consent of all the buyers? where they know that these amenities are going to be created on the second phase uh, of the time of the project. Is that acceptable or how does it go about? Well, see, first of all, under RERA, phase-wise development is acceptable, is permitted. And not only phase-wise as in, uh, you can say, building-wise, but in building also you can have phases. So you can, if you are constructing, let's say, 50 floor store uh, building, you can say that my first phase is 30 floor, then the balance 20 floor in phase 2. Now coming to your question. Common amenities. Common amenities. So see, we will keep it simple. Whatever is registered, you can sell. Whatever is not registered, you cannot sell. So let us take a case where there is a layout of uh, around 20 buildings. You register phase 1 as only 2 buildings, but you have not registered or shown clubhouse as forming part of this phase 1. Then it is okay then you can't sell, you can't advertise, you can't even tell that buyer that look here, this is a layout and I am going to give you swimming pool somewhere sometime later. No, you can't do that. If you have not registered with the project, you can't do that. So, the suppose for so the, the first two uh, buildings. Yeah, so therefore, I'm, what I am saying is, let us uh, say that you register three phases. For first two buildings will be completed in 2018, second, next phase two will be completed in 2020. 
and phase 3 will be completed in 2022 and along with phase 3 you are going to give swimming pool and yes. other club amenities then you must have that phase phase 3 registered at the time of promising that I am going to give a swimming pool. At that phase so of you, point, yes. I can come up with the common amenities, the clubhouse and everything. Yes. Okay. Now, do I need to take consent of the 70% of phase 3 for allowing the people of the first two phases to use the common amenities? No, no, no. 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 I will tell you why. Because see, as I said, to simplify, RERA is all about disclosures. So, if you are developing a project in three, uh, three phases, where your swimming pool is coming in, in the, the third, third phase. phase so what happens if I visit your website? I get to see these are this is your phase one, this is your phase two, this is your phase three, and along with phase three there is a swimming pool. Now this is not the only thing. The website Rera website mandates you to upload your draft agreement for sale. So your draft agreement for sale will also mention that your apartment is in phase one in at floor number so and so. You are also going to share a swimming pool with phase two and phase three. And that swimming pool is coming at the date of completion of phase 3 which may be 2022. So that is fine. So entirely similarly. So there is complete exposure correct. on the plans of the developer yes. on how the he project is going, is going to, to unfold. They unfold. And, unfold. And the person buying flat in the third phase as you asked. So the, that gentleman would always know that there is already phase 1 and phase 2 which has come up. And they are going to use this because it is disclosed in the project it is disclosed in your agreement for sale it but is it is not applied for layout. during the first two phases it is not registered during the first two phases the common amenities then you can't sell see the problem is let, let, uh, let, uh, i got your question so see if you register only one building with 20 floors and you have shown a layout development with blocks that there is going to be some development in the entire layout but today my phase one is single building with 20 floors then in that case, what you can sell is this 20 floors only. Agreed. You, can, you sell can't say, no, therefore I am saying, you can't say, I may come up or I am likely to come up swimming pool, no. So the defined plan is there, there is a phase 1 and there is a phase 2. But I want to, uh, suppose the developer wants to create the infrastructure of the amenities on phase 2. He is not promising it in the phase 1 right from day 1, but is informing them that the second phase will be built along with the common Correct. amenities. Then you can always do that. Then that is fine. Yes, okay. that is fine. My next question. So, because not only swimming pool, see uh, in case of layout, the most of the chunk of the area is what we normally speak about is recreational grounds, playgrounds. There are various other uh, facilities and amenities which are to be provided, which in the layout, sanctioned layout you can see. But in a registered phase, they may not be there. So, Ideally, you will have to disclose them that when are you so going during to during the phase that it gets registered, that lot of 70 percent people's consent is not required no. since it was declared from day one. Day one. Okay. Oh, day one. My next question is, like suppose there is a villa development project going on and these are twin villas, three sides open with one common wall and these are twin villas. Now, there are people who will buy both the villas, eliminate the wall in between and create it as one single villa. Now, that is a uh, amendment which is happening within the plot which has been purchased by that individual buyer. Will this kind of amendment also need the consent of 70 percent of the buyers? No, especially in uh, the villas, see what happens Rajesh is there are only two villas and you are removing a common wall. So, it really does not matter what happens. And so both the parties, both are, the same. parties are the same. So, whose consent you will take? Okay. He is, uh, he is the next. So, then uh, the other plot yes, owners or the villa now, owners are not associated I am, I am with I coming to that because you are not changing the layout plan or the structure plans of the allotee who has purchased single villa out of that too. So, any amendment in a villa sold with the consent of the buyer is okay. Okay. But if you try to change something so in the overall thing layout. Can I will just go a step further and say similar thing can happen in a building. Where on two a flats become two one flats. Flat. Normally, that is a practice that they remove the middle wall. Middle wall. So that is not an amendment which is uh, which requires the consent of seventy percent of the members who have been sold to. I was coming to that. That is an amendment actually. Okay. Because see, you have got the building sanction with two flats. Now, if there is no middle wall, when you go for occupation certificate, you will have to either get this thing sanctioned and show it to the corporation that this is what is being done and allow me to amalgamate this or you better get occupation certificate 
then go for amalgamation of this flat. Otherwise, that consent problem will be there. Will that consent problem will be there? Yes. That is in the case of a building. In a building, because you are changing. But not in the yeah, case of in villa development. In villa, because I said it is a because single plot. Because every plot is single yeah, plot. Single yes. plot okay. and there is a... See, so what I will just quickly again go back what we were discussing. That what you are actually selling is a plot. And the villa is being constructed by me. So, I may have my ideas about the plants. Got it. Got it. So, in a building amendment, even of amalgamating two flats might attract the might need... Attract to take the consent of the 70 percent of existing buyers. Yes. yes okay. Yes. That is uh, interesting. Uh, Mr. Badbade, what technically happens with RERA is the complete control of the finances of the project to ensure that the money is not misused or diverted to the other projects, but it is uh, kept in reserve for the completion of the project and at the registration time itself, the developer has to declare the total cost of the project. So, RERA will monitor the money kept in surplus so that the project needs uh, the gets the money which is required for completing the project. In this scenario, when a 100 rupee revenue comes to the developer, 70 rupees goes to the RERA controlled account, 30 rupees goes to the developer's account. This 30 rupees, no questions asked of what the developer wants to do with that 30 rupees. But these 70 rupees has to be used for the development of the project. Correct. And to withdraw money from this 70 percent, the developer has to create three documents, a structural engineer's report, a architect's report and a chartered accountant's report certifying the expenses, the legitimate expenses which need to be in the purview of the expenses which were declared to the RERA authorities at the time of registration, registration of, of the, the project. project. So, does this mean that the 70 rupees will get into the RERA account, the developer will then do the further expenses from the 30 percent and then subsequently claim from the 70 percent? Or can he start issuing checks from the 30, 70 percent to the legitimate expenses of the project? No, no. See, uh, again, uh, this needs a little elaborate answer. See, what happens is once that 70 percent is deposited, you are giving the certificates A, B, and C, as you said, engineer, chartered accountant, and the architect. So basically, the withdrawals is to the proportion of cost incurred. So cost. So he has to incur the cost first and then claim for the 70 percent. I'll come to that. Cost incurred is. One way, as you said, that actual cost incurred. In other way, there might be a situation where you have actually, let us say, asked a contractor to complete one floor. He has completed that one floor. He has raised a bill on you. You may not have actually cleared that bill, but he has raised a bill on you. Then that is a cost incurred. You can, yes, you can certainly take that money from RERA account to your own account, and from there you can issue checks because RERA. Uh, account which is a separate account, uh, most of the banks are not issuing any checkbooks. The idea is that whatever certificates you give, Should be transferred the money to will the be transferred to your account, open account and from there you can utilize that amount. It is not mandatory, some banks are following this, some banks are uh, taking the affidavits like uh, on our website, the regulations and uh, uh, it gives an affidavit, format of an affidavit which is to be given by promoter where he undertakes that his withdrawals are as per the certificates issued. So, what happens is practical purposes, you may not be even giving all the certificates to the banker. You are giving an affidavit and undertaking that yes, my withdrawals will be in terms with the certificates which are issued. Those certificates are required for auditor, auditor. The audit, every 6 months <coughs> audit is to be done. So, every 6 months your auditor will go through those certificates. So, it is a process, RERA is a process of self audit. Self, self check basically. Unless someday some uh, mishap happens yeah. and the RERA authority wants to audit the format of your working. No, I, I, I would add here Rajesh like the authority himself explains that all these people chartered accountant, engineer or architect, architect they are going to be extended arms of re the authority. At no cost to them. At no cost to them. <laughs> so, basically what is going to happen here is that there are no authorities, people as such coming and inspecting your documents or doing something different. But your own people whom you have engaged, they will verify your documents and everything. And, and they will certify it. And they will certify it and they will report it or they will publish it on your website, which in case of a complaint, the authority will inspect. So, this is a smooth process of uh, maintaining the accounts so that the project can benefit at the end of the day. That is the 
core objective of the core objective of radar as is stated is mainly to regulate the development of the project and to ensure that promoter takes that project to the logical end that is occupation certificate what are the expenses which are allowed in this 70% money which is retained in the rera account can it be the cost of land of course construction cost architect fees brokerage advertising marketing all that becomes a part of the project can the landlord also get be can be paid from the 70% uh, can the installments of a bank loan or a financial financial liability be paid from this 70% uh, what are the do's and don'ts of this 70 percent? No, see first of all at the time of registration of an ongoing project uh, as you know we are submitting three documents architect certificate, engineer certificate, chartered accountant certificate. So, this basically at the time of registration you will be disclosing estimated land cost, estimated construction cost. Now, estimated construction cost as you know would also include the interest to be payable to banks in non-banking financial corporations, even to money lenders who are registered under Money Lenders Act. Now, this is what the rules provide. No private funding. No private funding. No private interest. No, no private entities, no private interest. This is what Maharashtra rules provides. That so, this gets, this needs to get included in the cost of project, which is declared in the beginning of the at project. At the beginning of the project. So, when you are registering that, now as you refer to marketing cost, brokerage, this is a no, no, it is not included in project cost. There is a clear cut circular from Maharashtra. There are arguments going on. Now, you will also argue that is it not cost of the project. So, as a matter of fact, the circular also says that these are cost of the project, but still it is not in the purview. It is not in that 70 percent account. They expect so you the to broker spend 30 percent what you are getting. marketing, advertising yeah, and spend, brokerage. Spend brokerage, spend your uh, advertising, marketing, marketing, advertising, everything from that 30 percent which you are receiving. Okay, so the RERA is registering the brokers to ensure that they are connected with the project, yeah. but the RERA does not want the developer to pay the brokerage from the 70 percent revenue of the project is what you are saying. No, precisely that see the, these are two different issues, one RERA mandates registration of uh, brokers, bro agents, agents as is called, uh, estate agents is a different uh, altogether because uh, you are aware that these agents used to misrepresent misguide the, the buyers, misguide the pro, uh, buyers, misrepresent the project, and then the builder would have a simple say that this is not my representation. Somebody has misrepresented so it. So now he becomes. So now he also comes uh, under the purview of Reva, RERA. Now, as far as cost or maybe the brokerage which you are going to pay, as I said, it is still a project cost. So whatever hundred percent you are receiving. Out of that only you are paying brokerage, out of that only you are bearing but the market. But not from the but 70 percent. not from the 70 percent. Precisely, I think the main reason behind it would be that this 70 percent money which is kept un in RERA account, what the authority expects, what the law expects is that with this money, you complete the building. You complete your project. The structure. The structure along everything, not only the structure, but whatever you have shown. So, you may have shown a garden, you may have shown certain amenities, a gym, whatever you have shown, you complete that first and utilize that 70 percent money for that first. So, so these withdrawals towards interest or you know uh, where you want to give interest to the private finances is not allowed. Is not allowed. Okay. That is not included. So advertisement is also not allowed. It is not Although advertising uh, constitutes see, advertisement to a large percentage uh, of the project cost. I agree, cost. but advertisement means marketing ultimately. Yes. So, that is also not allowed. Uh, not what? allowed in a sense is not included in the project cost. See, uh, I will just quickly tell you, uh, when you go for registration of the project, those who have uh, visited the website, the project cost is divided into two parts. First is land cost. Under the heading of land cost, there are again certain uh, uh, headings which are added such as premiums which are paid for getting TDR, TDR uh, everything uh, premiums, concessions, yes, whatever. the lawyer services, registration fees, everything is included. And then the second heading is on site expenses. So, the construction cost and everything which is on site expenses, security charges, that, yes, electricity correct. charges, so that is all, all is included, okay. but these are on site expenses. So, so, what we need to understand is brokerage charges marketing advertising cost no. marketing cost is not events for promoting events and sales of the project no. is completely out not of that 70 percent per view not included in the project cost okay of that 70 percent 70 percent you are saying because you are presuming that the account go is going to be 70 percent 
Now what happens, yeah, what happens in a situation where the project is registered, 40% of the stock is sold and now the developer wants to pledge the unsold part of the project and raise a bank fund to complete the project. So what so happens in that uh, case, yes. does the developer need to take consent from the 70% of the 40% sold units? See, once you have started a project, once you have sold a project, any major changes which you are going to do, because I will tell you, when you say that I will be mortgaging a project, you will be bringing charge on the property, on the property which the allotee otherwise has purchased thinking that it is free from all encumbrances. As a matter of fact, a RERA website, there is a column, there is a window given on online website where you have to mention if there are encumbrances, if any. Now, if you have, at the beginning, you have said that there are no encumbrances on the property. Then to bring, you have to take the consent. Yes. And well, if there is an encumbrance in the beginning of the, the project, then it is not a problem. If it is disclosed, then there is no problem. So, subsequent so something which is not disclosed to an allottee and you want to bring in, which is likely to affect his rights in future, you must disclose. Let us, that is the simple code of And era. disclosure means taking consent of 70 percent of the 40 percent whom you have sold it. 70 percent of whatever number of whatever units there are sold. So, sold. even for raising a loan for completion of the project, on a, you by will mortgaging need, a, yes, by mortgage, you will need a consent. So, even if it is, even if it is mortgaging the unsold part of the project. Therefore, I said, see Rajesh, unsold part of project is what happens as you know, once you go on selling the flats, the financer gives you, issues you NOC and then that particular flat is sold. But when you are creating a charge on the property, which goes to the land also, then obviously, I mean you will need the consent. Need the consent because the allotee would, let, uh, let us consider a worst case, if tomorrow the, if you, the promoter fails to make the payment to the banker, the banker is going to attach the project. The banker is not going to say, all right, your single flat is allowed to be sold again. He is going to attach the project, saying any which way he is going to sell the balance flats, but he is going to attach the project. Okay. My next question is, a developer has promised the delivery of say, 100 units in 3 years time. In 3 years time, he has completed the project, but he has got 30 unsold units. What happens in that case? No, see, the era mandates that uh, 51 He also gets the occupation certificate, but there are 30 unsold but units the in the project. Then, the, then there is no difficulty. See, once you have received occupation certificate, RERA, that mandate of maintaining the bank account is gone. Okay. So, whatever sales you get from those 30 flats is all yours. And enjoy. then he is free to do whatever free he wants to do, to do with that money. So, as far as that is concerned, yes, you are free. Again, I will add to it that when you say out of 170 are sold, you have to bear in mind that RERA mandates that whenever 51 percent you have to form a society of the correct, if 51 percent or more are allotted, booked or sold, then you will have to apply for registering a society. Once occupation certificate is received or the 100 percent payment is received from them. What are the rights of a society which is registered after uh, selling 51 percent in the project? What are the rights of the society? No, no, see, if the building is uh, under construction and the society is registered, they would also monitor the project. It will be convenient for an authority if there will is Will they have authority to dictate on what needs to be done with the unsold not. project? Absolutely not. After the project is Absolutely completed with not. the occupation Absolutely. certificate, after the occupation no, certificate? No, they won't, see, they won't have any rights to decide how this building and when this building and how this construction should go on. They will only ensure that uh, what is promised on the website is being delivered on the site. That is all. So, basically this society uh, will, won't have any say in the sale or uh, development of the project except as is promised, let us say in agreement it is promised that in 3 years this project will be completed. So, this society will keep a watch that whether this project is really getting completed in 3 years or not. And the conveyance needs to be passed in 3 months three after months the project uh, is getting the occupation, occupation certificate. certificate is so, the, the the at that point of time you need to convey the land. Uh, along the with the building to the society and the common and amenities yes, to the and in that correct, society. And in that, in that case, if you have unsold area, you still reserve your rights to sell those uh, unsold apartments. So, if there is a delay of the payment of the installments or by a buyer, there is a penalty on that as well, according to RERA. If there is non-performance by the developer, then the developer has to compensate the buyer with the rate of interest rate of on interest. the entire amount of money that is paid. Yes. Now. There are two formats what can happen. 
uh, a developer wants to remove a buyer who is not adhering to the policies of the payments on the requisite times it has to be paid what happens to such a buyer that is one secondly if the buyer wants to withdraw from a project he has a freedom to withdraw he when he withdraws he gets he gives 30 days time for the builder to repay his money with the interest simple rate, rate of interest depending okay. on the SBI rate or something on those lending those rates. Lines. Lending lending rates. Rates. What happens when the buyer defaults on payments? See, now when buyer defaults on payment, uh, there are two possibilities. First of all, the builder has to address a notice to buyer in writing stating that this is your default, kindly do the needful, make the payment along with whatever accrued interest if any within 15 days from the receipt of the notice and if there are three consecutive defaults or there are three defaults of the buyer in paying the, paying the installments and other charges also there are various other charges which builder needs to collect from the lottery so other charges also if there is a failure then builder can address a letter to buyer after that first 15 days notice after three defaults after three defaults that you have defaulted, I have given you chance to rectify your defect, you have still continued with that default, so your agreement stands terminated or your allotment later, whatever the case may be, stands terminated and he will have to return the money uh, with not interest, he will have to return the money. Principal money. Depending upon, uh, see depend again it depends on the agreement, It he can forfeit the, the Deposit administrative charges administrative or whatever. charges, deposits, whatever liquidated damages if agreed if any. I do not agree with liquidated damages, but uh, uh, the deposit yes, he can forfeit the uh, money which So, does the developer have to wait for some formality to happen documentary wise or once it is forfeited, cancelled, money refunded, does he have to take the consent of the cancelled no, buyer again no to resell that unit? No, no. Nothing. Or do, does the developer have to take a document from any authority to ensure that this flat has been cancelled, the process of repayment see, is happening if there and is the repayment is done and now I want to resell the unit. So therefore, if there is a registered agreement for sale, he may have to execute an agri cancellation agreement, right? Uh, in case of allotment later or in any, any other case, his notice cancelling his allotment later and everything will have to be followed. So as such, once the allotment is cancelled, the developer is free to deal with his property the way he wants to. A lot he cannot have his say nor can he. What happens when the buyer consent? is not accep accepting the refund so when or not giving consent to the cancellation of the registered agreement and not paying also at the same time? Then it goes to the authority for. You can, a you can file a complaint to the authority that yes, he is not following the agreed terms of the agreement. Then they can pass an order. Appropriate orders may be passed by the authority at the relevant time. Okay, so I think uh, this is a remedy both for the developer as, as well, well as, as for the allot as well as for the uh, allotee. Allot See, and uh, one of my friend uh, uh, just counted the ratio of allotee and builders, and he says ninety-one percent rera is for allotee, nine percent it is for the promoter. It so is. It has to be that way. Only then discipline will happen and the projects will precisely, be completed on precisely. time. So, and 91 percent it is tilted in favor of LOT and 9 percent in favor of promoter. So, if promoter intends to cancel, similar way if LOT intends to cancel, uh, the LOT can take an exit by addressing you a letter that I want to exit from the project for ABCD reasons and then you return my money along with the simple rate of interest that is uh, money lending rate plus 2 percent rate of interest. So, any you know, such change which happens? The developer has to keep updating the website every quarterly every quarter. or every half yearly. Every the progress of the project has to be updated, updated every, every quarterly. Every 90 days. Okay. Half yearly is the audit. Audit. So, you need to maintain complete transparency. So, the developer cannot uh, misguide people by saying that majority of the stock is sold when it is not sold just to hike up the prices. He is maintaining oh, it is online. See, yes. If so, see, those days are gone. Those days are gone because obviously misguide people. Yes. I will tell you why. Let us say in the first stage at the registration, he has said I have got 50 flats for sale. In 90 days, he says I have sold 25 flats. Then his accounts must reflect because he is not only updating the sale. But he has to also update uh, the accounts. The, the certificates. The expenses, the, the accounts and so, the certificates. Correct. So, if you are saying that 25 percent or 25 flats are booked, there will be money reflected in your RERA account. 
if it is not reflecting it is the, the balance in the rear account is same as that of uh, first of uh, may when you registered the project then you can't lie to a uh, authority or you can't lie to anybody for that matter saying that i have booked the pr uh, particular premises uh, yes uh, units. apartments yes. Uh, now we talk about the 70 percent revenue and the 30 percent revenue the 70 percent revenue is there to protect and ensure that the project is completed, completed. on time as per the commitment of the developer when will the developer be able to withdraw the balance amount in the 70 percent on it the occupation certificate occupation completion certificate get the occupation certificate withdraw balance amount so the balance amount will be withdrawn after, after the, the occupation, the occupation certificate, certificate is, is provided yeah. to yes. so in case of multiple phases will the uh, the rera account be squared off at the end of every registered phase every registered so phase. he will be able to withdraw the Correct. profits so of that, that particular phase that is precisely and then he can start the second yes, phase yes that's the second phase so he, he also doesn't get stuck till the end of the a layout development or the project entire project development a project has got four phases and the developer has to give the overall period of the project completion or will he give phase number one two years phase number two another two years phase number three no. another two <coughs> years phase number four another two years or does he say that all the four layouts will be completed within a period of eight years how does he mention that see when it is a layout development it is up to the promoter what he wants to disclose. So, in a given case, a promoter may say, today I am going to complete only one building as phase one and let us talk about this building alone. Fair enough. So, he will say, so he will say I am going to complete this one building. But uh, regarding do I have to show the overall picture of the all the layout you will have to upload. Okay. The layout, see. I am I'm not entitled. Uh, not I'm only not you forced. are going to, not only you are going to upload the building permissions you are also going to upload the layout because it will also disclose rg area other amenities which are there so i can also disclose the completion period of the phase which i am registering today that's it and when i am registering the Next when phase, i want to sell phase number 2 you register so that it is not mandatory for me to mention the, the completion period of the entire of the layout. layout no it no, is not required no, no. so you can register it phase wise and you can define the time period for every phase and after the phase is over you can complete the profit and loss account of that uh, that, particular, that phase, particular phase withdraw your profits and then start the second phase and start maintaining rera account for the second phase yeah, yeah. fantastic i think this was a very interesting uh, conversation a very inspiring one as far as rera is concerned rules and regulations are concerned as far as the protection of the buyer is concerned which is the most important because the buyer has suffered since the day of independence at the hands of uh, various uh, developers not all of them but most of them i think the tables have turned it will be the buyer who will be protected on a priority. The government is going to ensure that every buyer gets justice, gets a quality product, gets what he's promised, and it will ensure that Indians staying abroad, Indians in India will now take advantage of RERA and be liberal with their investments as far as real estate as an industry is concerned. Because unlike gold or stock market, an Indian investor does leverage when he buys property by contributing a nominal amount of the total purchase and taking a majority payment from the banks in the form of bank loan. Uh, infrastructure and real estate is the backbone of the development of any country and I am sure RERA will ensure that the right development happens. India is a uh, land of opportunities, the whole world is looking towards India as a country of great performance and with rules like RERA, rules like GST this country is going to grow in leaps and bounds and is going to surprise the world with the speed of its development. Uh, Advocate Harshad Badbade, a very renowned personality uh, from uh, the High Court, is today one of the most uh, favored advocates by the developers for registering their projects, for being a guide to them for the do's and don'ts and I am sure people are benefiting from his advice. Uh, thanks a lot Mr. Harshad Badbade. Thank you. It Rajesh. was a pleasure Thank discussing you. RERA with you. Thank and I am sure this knowledge will help a lot of buyers, developers and people who are associated with the project. Thanks Thank you. Thank, Thank you Rajesh. Thank you.